Greetings all in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and welcome to the Wednesday edition of Brian's Bible Break as we unpack verses from God's Word and reflect on them. This morning we're in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 11, reading verses 15 to 17 from the New Living Translation. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for this glorious day. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to come into your holy presence to pause and to reflect on your word. To listen for your still small voice speaking a word of encouragement and hope into our lives. Lord, we pray that you will guide us and uphold us with your love and your grace. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So Mark chapter 11, verses 15 to 17. When they arrived back in Jerusalem, Jesus entered the temple and began to drive out the people buying and selling animals for sacrifices. He knocked over the tables of the many of the money changers and the chairs of those selling doves. And he stopped everyone from using the temple as a marketplace. He said to them, The scriptures declare my temple will be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you have turned it into a den of thieves. This, uh, this account appears in all of the Gospels, uh, this account of Jesus uh, clearing the temple of the money changers. And on the surface, it, it appears to be a kind of a, um, a radical act. But under the surface is a more disturbing reality of this story. This practice of, of um, animal sacrifices was was still taking place you you sacrificed animals um, sheep and and uh, for people who were uh, poor doves and or pigeons as in the case of Mary and Joseph and it was commonplace to to sacrifice to the Lord with animal sacrifices it became commonplace rather than bringing an animal from home you could simply buy one at the temple and have it sacrificed and the religious leaders um, shamefully were taking advantage of this adherence to the law and they were making money exorbitant amounts of money off the backs of their own people by charging exorbitant prices for these animals, but also charging exorbitant exchange rates to exchange currency into the temple currency. And so when Jesus comes, and this, of course, in, in in Mark's gospel, this account comes just prior to his um, to his being tried and and crucified. Jesus sees this atrocity that is taking place, this almost mocking of God's law by the religious leaders, the temple priests and temple religious leaders and no one was doing anything about it nobody was standing up and saying enough is enough this is mocking God's law and we need to stop this and so Jesus takes it upon himself to do just that he goes in and he knocks over the tables of the money changers those would be the the people who would exchange your um, your currency into temple currency, which would then be used to purchase the sacrificial animals. And uh, so he knocked over the tables of the money changers and the chairs of those selling doves. The doves would have been used for sacrifice. And he stopped everyone from using the temple as a marketplace. 
This is a prime example within the Gospels of the church, the, the worship place of God, becoming a, a place of the world. Rather than having the church be a place of worship, a place to commune with God, a place to, to, um, to experience the presence of God in real and tangible ways and to worship him in spirit and truth. And it's, it's not uncommon in our world today to see churches being used as marketplaces. And that's not to suggest that, that, that churches can't be used for ministry. But when the church is used as a marketplace, the church is used as a way to profit from other people. That's when it crosses a line. And that's what was happening here. When we do ministry in the name of Jesus Christ, we are doing it for his glory and to build his kingdom. And it's, it's no different than, than how we approach our, our lives and how we witness to the gospel. No strings attached. These people were taking advantage of their own people doing what the law commanded them to do. To come to the temple to sacrifice to the Lord. It will be akin to us charging an admission fee to come to church. That if you want to come to church, you're going to have to pay $10 to get in the door. And then you're going to have to pay again with your offering to the Lord. See how, how this gets twisted around? And that's not what God desires of us. He desires, of, of a, he desires us to come to him with open hands and open hearts. Not out of obligation, but out of joy and thanksgiving for all that he has done. And so Jesus says, the scriptures declare, my temple will be called a house of prayer for all nations. That's what the church is supposed to be. A house of prayer for all nations. It is supposed to be a place where we gather to worship the Lord in spirit and truth. To pray to open up our hearts in prayer to the Lord, to seek him with our whole heart. And Jesus convicts, convicts the people, and this includes the religious leadership, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the, the, the priests. He says, but you have turned it into a den of thieves. Many criticize the church today, saying that all we care about is money. All we care about is their money. All we want is their money. And there's no question the church needs money to function. If we don't have money coming in, we can't pay the, the, the bills that, that are required to, to keep the the church functioning. We need money to be able to function as a church. But money is, is a means through which God is able to do the ministry that he desires to do. It's not to, to make us rich. It's so that we can witness to the gospel of Jesus Christ in the world 
to be a beacon of light in our community. To be a place where people can gather to hear the good news of the gospel. To be a place where people can come and pray. Paul tells us that, that when, when we accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of our lives, we become the temple, the living dwelling place of God, the temple of God. That animal sacrifices are no longer necessary because Jesus, the perfect Lamb of God, sacrificed himself on the cross for our sake. He is our peace. He is our sacrificial lamb. He is our hope. And it is in his name that we come before God in prayer. And there's no strings attached. There's no, there's no money necessary. You cannot buy favor with God. What God desires is our hearts. Jesus recognized that in the temple, the people's hearts were dark because they had succumbed to practicing the ways of the world. And Jesus saw it as mocking God. And he took it upon himself to shine a light into the darkness. And he calls us to be his light in the darkness. And so friends, whatever you're about this day, let the light of Christ shine through you. Let his truth be evident in everything that you say and do for his glory. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for this day. And Lord, we're so grateful for all the ways that you bless us. Lord, forgive us for any ways that we have used your gospel um, in, in, in ways that do not bring, your, bring you glory. Forgive us, O oh God, for times when we have withheld the gospel. Lord, help us to be your light in this otherwise dark world. Heavenly Father, help us to be the church that you have called us to be. That your love and your grace and your peace would abide. Not, in, not only in the physical building, but also, Lord, in, in each one of us, in our hearts, which are your living temple. We thank you and praise you in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, friends, thanks for joining me this morning for this short reflection on God's Word. I hope that it has been an encouragement to you. And we look forward to seeing you tomorrow as we unpack another verse from God's Holy Scriptures. So, friends, go in peace. The Lord bless you and keep you this day and always. Amen. See you tomorrow.